as humanity survived World War I and launched the first space satellites. The family of Russian hermits fought for survival, eating the bark and reinventing the primitive tools of life in the remote taiga. 250 kilometers to the nearest village. Eyewitnesses recall why they fled from civilization and how they survived a clash with it. 13 million square kilometers of wild Siberian nature seems a little unsuitable place to live. Endless forests, rivers, wolves, bears and almost complete deserts. But despite this, in 1978, flying over the Taiga in search of a place for landing a team of geologists. A helicopter pilot found traces of a human settlement here. At an altitude of about 2 meters along the mountainside not far from the nameless tributary of the Abokan River wedged between pines and larches. There was a cleared area that served as a garden. This place has never been explored before. The Soviet archives were silent about the people living here. And the nearest village was more than 250 kilometers from the mountain. To believe that someone lives there was almost impossible. Having learned about the pilot's find, a group of scientists sent here in search of iron ore went on reconnaissance. Strangers in the Taiga could be more dangerous than a wild beast. Having laid out gifts for possible friends on backpacks and just in case, checking the condition of the gun. A group led by geologist Galina Pismanskaya headed to a site 15 kilometers from their camp. The hut consisted of one cramped, moldy room, low, sooty, and cold as a cellar. Under such conditions, five people have huddled here for 40 years. The first meeting was exciting for both sides. When the researchers reached the goal, they saw a well-kept garden with potatoes, onions, turnips and piles of taiga rubbish around a hut, blackened by time and rains, with a single window, the size of a backpack pocket. Pismanskaya recalled how the owner hesitantly looked out from behind the door, an ancient old man in an old shirt made of burlap, paid portka with an unkempt beard and disheveled hair, and, looking apprehensively at strangers, agreed to let them into the house. The hut consisted of one cramped, moldy room, low, sooty, and cold as a cellar. Its floor was covered with potato peelings and shells of pine nuts, the ceiling site. Under such conditions, five people have huddled here for forty years. In addition to the head of the family, the old man Karplikov, his two daughters and two sons lived in the house. Seventeen years before meeting with scientists, their mother, Akulina, died of exhaustion here. Although Karp's speech sounded legible, his children already spoke their own dialect, distorted by life in isolation. When the sisters spoke among themselves, the sounds of their voice resembled a slow muffled coo. Smensky recalled. Younger children born in the forest have never met other people before, older ones have forgotten that once lived a different life. A meeting with scientists led them into a frenzy. At first they refused any treats, jam, tea, bread, muttering, we can tea do this. It turned out that I saw bread here and once tried only the head of the family. But gradually relations were established, savages got used to new friends and learned with interest about technical innovations. The appearance of which is missed. The history of their settlement in the Taiga became clearer. Karp Likov was an old believer, a member of the fundamentalist orthodox community. Sending religious ceremonies in the form in which they existed until the Avoye century. When power fell into the hands of the Soviets, the disparate communities of old believers. Who had fled to Siberia at one time from the persecution that had begun under Peter I, began to go farther and farther from civilization. During the repressions of the 1930s, when Christianity itself was attacked. On the outskirts of the old Believer village, a Soviet patrol shot his brother in front of Likov. After this, Karp had no doubt that he needed to run. In 1936, collecting his belongings and taking some seeds with him. Karp with his wife Akulina and two children, nine-year-old Savin and two-year-old Natalia, went into the woods building a hut after a hut until they settled down where the geologists found the family. In 1940, already in the Taiga, Detroit was born in 1943 Agafia. 
everything that children knew about the outside world, countries, cities, animals, other people, they drew from the stories of adult and biblical stories. In hungry years, when crops were destroyed by animals or frosts, family members ate leaves, roots, grass, bark and sprouts of potatoes. But life in the taiga was also not easy. For many kilometers there was not a soul around, and the Lykovs for decades learned to do what was at their disposal. Instead of shoes, kaloshes made of birch bark were sewn, patched clothes until it rotted away from old age. And a new one was sewn from hemp burlap. That little that the family took with them during the escape, a primitive spinning wheel, details of a loom. Two teapots, over time it became worthless. When both teapots rusted, they were replaced with a vessel of birch bark. And cooking has become even more difficult. By the time of the meeting with geologists, the family S diet consisted mainly of potato cakes with ground rye and hemp seeds. The fugitives were constantly starving. They started using meat and fur only in the late 1950s, when the tribe matured and learned to dig hunting pits. Long pursuit of prey in the mountains and became so hardy that he could hunt barefoot all year and sleep in 40 degree frost. That is what I remember in 1961, when snow fell in June, and Aquilina, the wife of Carp, who gave all the food to the children, passed away. The remaining members of the family were saved by the case. Having discovered a seed of rye accidentally sprouted in the garden, the family built a fence around it and guarded it for days. The spike lot brought 18 grains, of which several years rye crops were restored. Scientists were struck by the curiosity and abilities of people who have been in information isolation for so long. Due to the fact that the youngest in the family, Agafia, spoke in a chant and stretched simple words into polysyllabic ones. Some guests of the Lykovs first decided that she was mentally retarded, and were greatly mistaken. In a family where there were no calendars or hours, she was responsible for one of the most difficult tasks. For many years kept records of time. Old man Karp in his ADS reacted with interest to all technical innovations. He enthusiastically accepted the news about the launch of satellites, saying that he noticed a change back in the 1950s, when the stars began to walk in the sky soon and was delighted with the transparent plastic packaging. Lord, what they have invented, glass, but wrinkling. But the most progressive member of the family and the favorite of geologists was to try, a connoisseur of Tega, who managed to build an oven in a hut and weave birch bark boxes in which the family kept food. For many years, every day on their own strict log boards. For a long time he watched with interest the quick work of the circular saw and the lathe which I saw in the camp of geologists. Finding themselves for decades divorced from modernity by the will of the head of the family and circumstances. The Lykovs finally began to join in the progress. At first they took only salt from geologists, which in their diet did not have all 40 years of life in the taiga. Gradually agreed to take forks, knives, hooks, grain, a handle, paper and an electric flashlight. They took every innovation reluctantly, but the TV is a sinful affair, with which they encountered in the camp of geologists, turned out to be an irresistible temptation for them. Journalist Vasily Peskov, who managed to spend a lot of time next to the Lykovs, recalled how the family was drawn to the screen during their rare visits to the camp. Karpasipovich sits right in front of the screen. Agafia looks with his head poked out from behind the door. She seeks to atone for sin immediately, she will whisper, be baptized, and will stick her head out again. The old man prays after, diligently and all at once. It seemed that acquaintance with geologists and their gifts useful in the household gave the family a chance to survive. As often happens in life, everything turned out exactly the opposite. In the fall of 1981, three out of four carp children died. The elders, Savin and Natalia, died due to renal failure resulting from many years of a harsh diet. Then the tri died of pneumonia, it is likely that he picked up the infection from geologists. On the eve of his death, the tri refused their offer to transport him to the hospital. 
We cannot do this, he whispered before his death. As long as God gives, so much will I live. The surviving cop and Agafi geologists tried to convince to return to relatives living in the villages. In response, the Lykovs only rebuilt the old hut, but refused to leave their native place. In 1988, Kark died. Having buried her father on a hillside, Agafia returned to the hut. The Lord will give, and she will live, she said then to the geologists who helped her. And so it happened, the last child of the Tega, after a quarter of a century, she continues to live alone on the mountain above Abakan. Please share these videos on your social networks, buttons for the video and subscribe to the channel. Please go and see other videos about Agafya Lykova, which you see now on the screen in the final screensavers. There are a lot of rare interesting facts about the hermit. Thank you all for watching.